Uh, right, we now have Mia Bennett from uh, Turn Down Digital. Um, hi everyone, I'm Mia. I run Turn On Digital, basically a boutique uh, mobile agency, very similar to these guys. Uh, we've done a bunch of stuff for um, different brands, uh, mostly publishing and media. Um, but what I really want to talk to you guys about this situation is it's basically a very creative app. So we publish it for free, so it's not really commercial, but kind of an interesting um, <coughs> application. I kind of thought you might be interested in the case study we need. Um, so we, we were thinking about doing something really cool, really fun, really creative, and we sort of thought, instead of doing a lot of the stuff that people are doing now, let's really think about the mobile platform and see what we can do that would be very, very specific with this platform. So, you know, all of these things you already know, so mobile is pretty personal, we want to take advantage of that. We wanted to really take advantage of the fact that mobile can be very much interactive, two-way communication, um, that whole fast and immediate uh, urgency that mobile induces, that's what we wanted to take advantage of. And of course, mobile is always with everyone. So we kind of thought, okay, whatever we build, we want to make sure that that really plays a big part in it. Um, and of course, all of these funky new technologies that are available to us, especially um, location apps, um, location services. So what we did, we approached uh, two artists, Ben Rick, um, that's their photo. Um, they're basically the guys behind this, um, this diary will change your life. I don't know if you've seen these books. These are diaries that every day or every week you'll have a task to do. So they're kind of very funny, they're very witty, they have a cult following, um, very much like a student type of product. Um, and I, I was a huge fan of them. So we kind of approached them and we said, okay, we love your stuff, we think um, your tone would really, really work really well on mobile, and we want to do something that has that kind of location element and it has a bit of interactivity and really brings people together. Um, so we just kind of really random broad brief, this is what the guys came up with. So the situation is kind of complete strangers based on their location, it gives them random tasks to do. So how does that actually work out? Okay, first, so you download the app, you have to register, you don't actually need to add any information, you just have to add your photo. Then there's a list of tasks that you would want a stranger to do to you. So you can select one of those tasks. <laughs> <laughs> so it from hide me for five seconds, it's kind of nice. Um, it goes down to uh, give me all your money from in your left pocket, give me the finger, so it kind of gets progress to the of course, but you can basically choose what you want. Second, that's it, you don't need to do anything else, you need to just forget about it. Whenever somebody else is close enough to you, they'll get your photo, they'll get your location, and they'll get one of your tasks randomly. And of course, they have five minutes to come and find you. Um, so the whole idea is they'll come and find you, they'll perform the task, and basically you can kind of confirm that that has happened. Um, and of course, you'll get to do the same. So one day you'll be walking around Covent Garden or Oxford Circus and get like a little ping uh, with a photo of a stranger with a task that you need to do. Um, so uh, the whole idea is to make your life a little bit more exciting and a bit more unpredictable, but also really bringing strangers together. We're, we're kind of, you know, walking around in the cities, never looking at anyone, and we kind of thought, okay, we're going to make that change. Um, so pretty niche idea. We kind of thought, okay, there is no way anyone is ever going to get this idea. We kind of tested it around Covent Garden, and every time we got the pink from our own team, we were kind of surprised. I kind of thought, okay, this is really weird. Um, so we kind of thought, okay, we're going to launch just before South by Southwest because we kind of thought if anyone's going to go for this, it's the crowd that goes there just uh, before March. Um, and our expectation was sort of, okay, we'll get 2,000 downloads maybe in six months and, you know, a bunch of designers or geeky people will know about it. Um, thankfully, we got covered by a lot of different media, so, uh, which was really, really great. So a lot of people wrote about it, especially in America. Um, I mean, Guardian, Observer, I know like, those are the three in the UK, but we got a lot of coverage in the US. Um, but more importantly, huge reaction from our users. So not only these guys downloaded this app and tried it out, we started getting emails of different requests, like, when are you going to go on Android, Blackberry, all this kind of thing. But then they also started sending us emails of other companies we should be partnering with, and functionality we should do, or what other piece of code we should include. So really, really interesting interaction. Um, and this is really our result. So we were kind of hoping for, uh, I don't know, 2,000 downloads. And uh, this is the first eight weeks. We got about 30,000 downloads and about 1,000, uh, 100,000 situations that were served out of our servers. Um, out of that uh, 30,000, 45% of them were active users. So they actually had the app um, running in the background, um, being very adventurous. Um, and this is a couple of really unexpected things that we, we got. Uh, we never did any marketing anywhere else other than we approached a few people in the UK and of course in the US. Um, but almost a third of our users are in France. I think a third of them are actually in Paris. Um, <laughs> so for some reason, very, very popular in Paris, so a lot of people um, have been using it. And also in New York, um, in New York 
we've just been asked to do an installation based on the data we've gathered from the people. So we're going to do a little installation for Museum of Modern Art uh, very soon in July. Um, and that's sort of um, the idea of the situation is. So my quick little tiny lesson here is, um, I know we're all thinking about really awesome things to do and kind of turning web apps into mobile apps, which is great. But it's also good to kind of think about the actual mobile platform, what could the actual mobile platform do? Because we can really think about stuff that's out of the box. This whole idea was based on a book. Um, and I think we can do more things like that as well. Thank you very much. Situationist movement in France in the late 60s or 70s. The whole idea was that you basically raise against a man and you'll be a, a little bit rebellious. So people will do special acts and they'll come up, people will come together. So it's sort of based on that philosophy. Um, it's very, very, very different and it's very commercial. So what they do, they build a lot of um, partnerships as well, whereas this is not really a platform. Um, and they are doing something that's very much with that mindset of let's do something commercial rather than really bringing people together and also bringing friends together, whereas this is more of a social movement, sort of bringing strangers together. And I mean, this could be turned into a platform, but it's not there yet. It's just a creative idea. How do you market it? Strangely enough, we really didn't. Um, Basically, we, um, the guys, Benrick guys, um, who are great, great artists, they sort of had a bunch of connections and they started emailing a few people. We really didn't think to do anything more. In fact, I wasn't even in the UK when we launched. I went to, to South by Southwest. And when I was there, I got a little email with attachment from Observer uh, magazine. Somebody had taken a picture saying, oh my God, your app is in there. <coughs> and we didn't even know. So a lot of it was very much organic. We didn't really do much. Which is lucky because I always tell all my clients that they have to have like a huge marketing plan before we even touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have a promotional platform for it yet? Or? No, but we have been talking to a few different agencies who are interested in sort of doing a version for potentially. Um, <coughs> so, and a few other companies as well, not just agency types. So we can potentially turn it into, let's say, a white label. Uh, but for now, um, it's just what we see. And it's quite complicated because there is a whole moderation in the back end so that we have a separate app, which we only use, because everything, all of the photos that come through and all the tasks that people submit, we will moderate just to make sure. <laughs> um, <coughs> I just wondering what the most popular task was. Oh, it's <coughs> so lame. You know, the most popular one is compliment me on my haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Something very sorry. This is a bit random. We, for Mama, what we did, we took 80, 80 situations, kind of completely randomly. So we wanted to choose about 10 or 15 out of those 80, uh, and I ended up selecting them based on tasks and locations. So I wanted to cover all of the tasks in all of the different cities, and we put this video together. And all of the photos of the, almost half of those situations, the photos look similar. So the people that actually done the tasks, somehow they look similar, like they were all, they both had tears, or they both had funny glasses, or they were both women <coughs> with really curly hair. It was kind of a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, it's so awful. So you, uh, you, you're filtering them for personal safety or for adult content, or what? Yeah, a bit of both. Um, so basically, I must say, not a lot of people have been uploading dodgy photos. I might have seen like two or three out of the 30,000. Um, so people have been very good, but a lot of times they, they, they send photos of like a group, which we have to reject because you know you never know. Um, so, but yeah, and sometimes they, they send photos of themselves and children, and we kind of think maybe sometimes it's not appropriate. Um, but yeah, that's the reason. Uh, I have two things. Is there a business model to this? And the second part is, is it because there isn't a business model that is popular in a way? Or um, originally. Um, like this, this has been in process for quite a while. We did have a business model, um, and it was very long and very boring. Um, but eventually, what we, we realized was that we really wanted to stay true to the to the message of, of the actual app. And the artists, um, they were really keen to have something that was really true to their brand and what they were doing. And we kind of thought that's really fair enough. So we sort of decided to look at this as a creative idea, creative project. 
Um, and of course, there, there's always opportunity to kind of take this technology and build something else based on it because we, we did quite a lot of work to make it work because it's not it's not matching a person to a location like Foursquare would do. It matches two random people that are constantly moving. So it's a little bit more complicated. But yes, so we'll do that for you. So I think it's maybe it's popular because it doesn't have like a clear business model. It's not trying to get your money. It's not no, no, uh, absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, that was one of the points as well that we tried to make. We actually took, when we released it, as part of our press release, it was that this was the first Barsis app. So we just want you guys to meet. That's it. We don't really want anything in return. No. Just, you send your data and <coughs> um, we've done some super clever stuff because yes, that was absolutely one of the biggest issues. In fact, I think out of our development time, I reckon maybe 70, 75 percent of the time was spent to solve that problem. Um, because of course, we need to get really um, in a precise location, and we have to do it continuously. But we have done some very, very clever hacks to kind of use a few different types of technology to know where people are, and we don't use the battery all the time. So we've reduced the battery usage by about 80% of what we would have normally been. Um, I mean, it can be improved, but we've done quite a lot to sort that out. So the, the comparison done on the surface, so the, the information mm, on the location yeah. the yeah. the yeah. And then you use push, push notifications? Yeah. So they get a little push notification, um, and then they need to immediately open the app and get the um, have, it's pretty accurate, but we, we match people when they're about 50 meters apart. Okay. Because otherwise, that's that's your, about no, no, no. The margin error is much less. But when the two people are 50 meters apart, that's when we trigger the match because then they can kind of do the little hunt. Um, I don't actually know how exact. Few meters. Yeah, it's only few, few meters. meters. We try to do a really accurate location. The only issue is, once we match them, then we stop uh, checking. So in that like two second, two minutes, if somebody's trying to find them, they might have moved from that location. So they need they need to hunt. And you use GPS. We do use GPS. On and off. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very much so. On and off. Your users usually um, are sort of based in terms of you have not got to all the No. Um, we we uh, stayed away from that purposefully. We didn't want this to be a dating service, um, and we really wanted to just people to meet, uh, whether boys and girls. And we originally thought <coughs> not a lot of girls would come on the service, which is why we kind of thought, okay, we're going to moderate and we're going to make sure all of the tasks are not, you know, too intrusive. Um, but surprisingly, there's been quite a lot of girls on the service, and I think it's because we didn't make it into that kind of a dating thing. Just a bit of fun. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.